Let's build a game with React 3 Fiber. Japanese writing is made of three sets of characters. Hiragana for Japanese words, katakana for foreign words, and kanjis for borrowed Chinese characters. If kanjis can be a lifetime learning process, hiragana and katakana can be learned in a few days, so let's create a funny way to learn them. What we will do is recreate the vibe of Fall Guys Maze mini game where we have different portals and only one give access to the next stage. We will replace the maze system by going to the correct character. I think we are going for 2 to 3 tutorials before finishing the game, so no time to waste. Let's go! Clone the starter pack repository, run yarn and yarn dev. You should have a simple scene with a cube. As we did in the physics tutorial, we will use Rapier Physics Engine. I recommend you to start by this video if you haven't watched it yet. Run Yarn, add React 3 Rapier, and wrap our experience in the physics component. Let's draft our game scene. We'll start with the light, an ambient light with intensity of 1 and the directional light for the shadows later. Our stage will be a low height cylinder. To create it, we first define its physics body with a rigid body. We use colliders to false to add ourselves, a cylinder collider, and set the type to fixed, because we don't want it to move, but still to impact other object physics. Then we can add our cylinder mesh with a wide material. The camera is too zoomed in, let's fix it and change the background color. Ok, it's better. To give a Japanese touch to our game, I found a Tori gate on a PolyPizza website. Download and put it in the public models Tori folder and name it model. Run GLTF JSX to get the React 3 fiber structure automatically generated from the model file. Copy the generated code and delete the file. Create a Tori component and paste the code. Rename the component to Tori and fix the use GLTF path. Let's add one to our experience. Nice, now let's position three of them in the background. We can rotate them for a better result. Let's add a reflective floor with mesh reflector material. This gives a nice effect, but the cylinder is too high. Wrap it into a group and decrease the Y position. We can add fog to blend better the background tories than the floor. Here it is. Time to display some Japanese characters. We will use the text 3D component from Dry. It requires a FaceType font file that we will generate from a font file on FaceType.js. I chose Notosense Japanese from Google Font. But look, if we generate the JSON file, it's 20 megabytes, way too big. It's because it includes all characters and as a Japanese font, it includes thousands of kanjis that we won't use. So let's generate only the characters we will use. In our code, create a constant file and declare a canas array. Our characters will have a name, the Romaji form we are able to read, a character object to have the hiragana and katakana value to be able to study both. I also added dakten, handakten and combination boolean but we won't use it now. I asked ChatGPT to generate the other ones because I'm a lazy boy. Copy the array to your clipboard and paste it into your browser developer tools. Then run a map function to return a string containing all the kanas. I copy paste it to the restrict character set option. Now the generated file is only 87 kilobytes. This is way better and usable. Put it in a fonts folder in public and let's add the text 3D component in the scene. We'll display the first hiragana of our array and add the material rendering it. For the moment, we'll use a mesh normal material. Define the font path and the size. And here we have our first 3D Japanese character displayed. Time to create our game engine, we'll use Doosan State Management Library. It's a simple way to have data available in our project. The alternative we have are using a context, but it will cause re-renders, or we would use Redux, but it will be too much code for the same result. Install it with Yarnat Doosan and create a store file for our game engine. We'll start by creating a function named generate game level. It will take as a parameter an object containing the number of stages we want. A level will be an array of stages. For each stage, we will increase the number of kanas to increase the difficulty. For each options, we will choose randomly a kana from our characters. 
We loop until we find one that was not already in our stage, then we add it to our stage. Then we randomly select a kana from our stage to be the correct answer, and we push that stage to our level. Let's try to generate our game level in the app component, and we can see we have 5 arrays. I made a mistake for the number of characters to guess, but we will correct it in the next part, or you can try to fix it yourself. Perfect, let's declare our store. We will make it available with useGameStore. We call the create method function from Zustand. It takes a function as a parameter. From there, we have access to the set method to update value in our store. Our store function is meant to return the state object of our game. We need a level, null by default, the current stage index, zero, the current kana, null, and the mode, let's set hiragana for now. Let's add start game method. We will generate a game level, get the current core kana from it, and call set with the new level and current good answer. Add a next stage function that increases the current stage and get the new good answer for this stage. Now in experience, we can access to the start game with use game store and also the level and current kana. We start the game in a use effect, but later we'll add a menu to select the mode and difficulty. You can see we have access to it and the correct kana is he. Let's move the level and correct answer to a new component named kana spots, where we will display our level. We also need the current stage. If the level is null, it means the game didn't start, so let's return null. Then let's get our current stage and map to render one component per kana. We render a group with the unique kana name as a key and rotate it by a percentage of a forward circle over the y-axis by dividing the index by the number of kanas and multiplying it by 2 math pi. Let's add another smaller cylinder to be like a platform for our kana. And let's move the text 3D from the experience to our spot and update the displayed character. Nice, we just need to position our text better. We can use center and increase the Y position. For the rotation, we will do the opposite rotation from the parent group to make it face our screen. Here it is. Let's add a character. I will temporarily use a model from Poimon Dress Market. Download it and put it in Models Mail folder. Copy JSX and graph and paste it into a component we'll name character. Update the function name and change the path to use your local model file. We won't set the logic of our character movement in the model to be able to change it later. Create a character controller file. It's a group wrapping our character. Add it to the experience. Hello, mister. Wrap our character inside a rigid body. We use a capsule collider. That's the simplest one matching a human shape. Look, try to put it higher to see if it behaves correctly. Nice. OK, remove it. Now let's add keyboard controls into our app. I explained it in the physics tutorial if you need more info. Now in character controller, we have access to use keyboard controls to know which keys are pressed. We need a reference to the rigid body to interact with it. In use frame, declare an input subject containing X, Y, and Z properties set to zero. If the jump key is pressed, we will increase the Y impulse. If right or left are pressed, we will increase decrease the X impulse and Z impulse for forward and back keys. Declare the jump force and movement speed constants and apply the impulse on the rigid body. Now our character moves but fall. We can disable rotations on the rigid body as we always want our characters to be up. Now it's better, but the character slides on the floor for too long, it's not natural. We can increase the friction on the floor. Better. But we still need to reduce the speed because if we press the key for too long, the speed increases too much. We can get our current rigid body linear velocity with the linval function. Now let's add condition to apply impulse only if the speed didn't reach the maximum velocity. Starting to look nice. Wrap the character model in a group and store a reference to it. Declare a change rotation variable if we apply new impulse. We will calculate the current angle our character is heading to and rotate accordingly. Now our character is always looking in front of him. Let's add a is on floor reference to prevent jumps when our character doesn't touch the floor and is in the air. And let's reset it when it touches anything in on collision enter. Perfect, we have a very basic but working character controller. 
Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. If it's the case, please hit the like button as it really helps this channel grow and be more visible to other developers. In the next part, we should be able to start learning Canals using our game. If you want to continue learning React Fiber with me, you can jump to the next tutorial available here.